pigmenting translucent silicone. In this video, we're going to discuss the process of accurately pigmenting translucent silicone to simulate realistic flesh tones. And of course, we'll be introducing our new flesh tone pigments. So if you're casting silicone dolls, silicone masks, silicone special effects skins, or silicone medical simulators, anytime you're casting silicone to simulate human skin or organic tissue, you will need this knowledge. So what we're going to be doing here is discussing the process of taking translucent silicone and pigmenting it to look like real skin. And translucent silicone, we have a huge variety of translucent silicone skin materials, but this is the most accurate way to reproduce human skin or the look of human skin in a synthetic material. Now to pigment silicone to look like human skin, we're going to use two different materials, silicone pigment and flocking. Now our silicone pigments are just very concentrated silicone pigments and it just takes a little bit of those pigments mixed into the translucent silicone to get a very rich color. So a little bit of this goes a long way and we now have seven standard flesh tones, but we'll get back to that here in just a minute but also flocking. Flocking is a really important detail if you're making hyper-realistic silicone skins. Now we supply flocking colors in a wide variety of colors, but flocking is important because it breaks up the flat look of just silicone pigment. So flocking, because it is a microfiber rather than a silicone uh, color dispersion, it doesn't mix into the silicone and dissolve. So it actually maintains its independence as a little microfiber, a little micro particle. And when these little particles are mixed into translucent silicone, we wind up with little specks or little dots of different colors. And that's what really gives that organic color effect to translucent silicone skins. So it's important to use both of these materials together to get a really realistic organic skin look. Now, before we get started mixing, it's important to go over some silicone coloring tips and just go over some basic rules for translucent silicones. First and foremost, work with good lighting. Work in a well-lit area, and sometimes you might even want to go out into the sunlight to check your work. But incandescent lighting is a must if you're doing really critical coloration. Also, buy a color wheel. You can find these at most art supply stores in the paint section, and these are little cardboard wheels that'll help you with your color theory. And next, you want to make sure you're always pigmenting to the lightest shade of skin tone. Because when you're painting translucent silicone later on, you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter when you're painting a translucent silicone. So remember, pigment to match the lightest skin tone on your subject. Now, this one's really important. When you're mixing your colors, always add dark to light colors when mixing. If not, it's real easy to wind up opaquing your silicone by adding too much color. So take your time and add dark colors to light colors when you're mixing. Also, flocking. Remember, adding flocking to your colors will break up that color and give you a much more organic look. Now, last but not least, experiment and practice. The more you play with the silicone and practice mixing colors, the better you'll be at it. And remember, don't be afraid to play with the silicone. Use leftover batches of silicone to practice your color technique. Now, for the record, everything we're casting in this video will be the 5110F or the fast silicone. So 5110F is just a fast skin-like silicone. It's a very soft skin-like silicone, kind of like the tips of your fingers. Now, first, before we get too far into flocking and all the other things, it's important to understand what silicone pigments are and how they work. Silicone pigments are pigment powders that have been dissolved in silicone oil. And you can add typically up to about 1% of the total mass of the silicone you're working with. 
But it's important to remember silicone pigments are intended for this purpose of pigmenting silicone. And if you start adding other things like some artist oil paints or acrylic paints or food color, you can wind up with some really bizarre things happening with your silicone. Sometimes the colors won't stay. Sometimes they might leach out of the uh, cured silicone. And uh, most importantly, sometimes some materials will actually inhibit the silicone and cause it to not set at all. We hear a lot of horror stories on this side of the business. So real important, make sure whenever you're mixing silicone, you're only adding compatible materials to the liquid silicone. Now we have seven new flesh tones ranging from light to very dark. And it's important to remember that these are a starting point for your color mixing. Obviously, it would be impossible to have an off-the-shelf solution for every flesh tone out there in the human race. So these seven colors cover a pretty wide spectrum that then you can add additional flocking colors and other silicone pigments to these to augment them and match them to your subject's flesh tone. But if you are an artist using silicone, remember this is an art form and you will have to adapt to that. That means you will need to be doing some color mixing. So don't expect there to be an off-the-shelf color match for every skin tone out there. So again, think of these seven skin tones as a starting point for your color scheme. Now the silicone we're going to be mixing up to pour up our test parts is 5110F. 5110F is a fast silicone, hence the F there in the name of the product. And this has about a six to eight minute working time and a one hour demold at 75 degrees. And I'll put some links to some of our other silicone casting tutorials at the end of this, so be sure to check those out because I don't want to get too sidetracked with the silicone. But important to know the working time here because all of this mixing will need to take place within that six to eight minute working time. So again, six to eight minute working time and about a one hour demold at 75 degrees. Now, once I've measured out my two components, and again, that's mixed one to one, once I've measured out the two components, I'm ready to start stirring this up and adding my color. And I'm going to show a slightly different approach for this later in the video, but for now, I want to show how most of you are going to do this for casting simple parts. Now, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of the light olive. This is our lightest skin tone. And I'm just going to add a small amount of this. And someone asked the other day in one of the comment sections, someone asked if uh, you could add more color to make it darker or less color to make it lighter. And the quick answer to that is no, but I'm going to demonstrate why. What happens with a little bit of color, you wind up with a little bit more waxy, translucent appearance like we have here. And you can test that by pulling it up on the side of the mixing bucket and seeing how well you can see the uh, printing through the silicone. See as I'm doing right there. So you see that's still a little bit too translucent. So by adding a little bit more of that light olive color, we're not going to change the color so much as we change the opacity or the translucency. So we mix that in and it's going to opaque it just a little bit. And again, when you're mixing silicones like this and you're adding this to translucent silicone, that translucency is really important. That's what you're paying for with a translucent skin material like this. So you want to make sure you don't overdo it and take that away. Now, once we've got that to a point of our liking, we're ready to start adjusting that color. Now for this, if you wanted to push that to a lighter flesh tone, you could of course add white. And we can add just a little bit of white to this. Now I know I'm going against my original tips because I'm adding light to dark, but I wanted to show how you could adjust something like this. If you realized going into this that uh, suddenly you've mixed something a little dark, you can always grab a little bit of white silicone pigment, mix that in and that will knock that down. But again, that's where having that color wheel handy will really help you out a lot. Now, if we need to, we could add more silicone pigments to this. We could use some of our standard silicone colors like green or red or brown to adjust this. But uh, we're going to now segue to adding our flocking colors to adjust this the rest of the way to get the flesh tone as realistic as possible. Now, to start with, I'm going to add a little bit of the flesh tone flocking. And depending on the color scheme, if I'm doing just a basic like medium flesh tone, I usually add a little bit of the flesh, tan, and the red flocking. 
Now the red, that's what really gives some life to that translucent silicone. So again, we're going to start with a little bit. We're going to come back and add a little bit more of that later. But we're also going to add some tan. And that tan, just a little bit of that. We don't want to go too crazy and darken this too much. But we want a little bit of the tan, again, just to break up that color and just give it a little bit more variety when that's mixed in. And you'll find the more colors you can incorporate in flocking colors, the more realistic your flesh tone will be. Now, I mentioned earlier about the color wheel. One of the little tricks in color theory is when you start having a color that winds up too pink, uh, you can knock that down by adding a little bit of green. So one of the things here with the green flocking, these come in little shaker top containers. So if we just want to add a little bit of that, we can. We're just going to add a little bit of green, even though this really, this is already kind of a, a nice peach color. If we wanted to take some pink out of that, we could by adding some green to that. Now, I didn't think it had enough red in it at this point, so I came back with a little bit more of the red flocking. And that's probably one of the more critical colors, especially if you're doing realistic living tissue. Adding the red flocking really adds a lot of life to your paint scheme. And the whole point of this is the more realistic you can get that internal color of the silicone, the less paint is required to finish the job when you demold your part and start painting it. So you want this flesh tone to be as realistic as possible and again matching the lightest tone on your subject. So the minimal amount of silicone paint is required later to get it the rest of the way and that way you don't wind up have, with having to do like 20 layers of paint on top of your finished part. And now our silicone is ready to cast. And this is a very low viscosity formula, so we don't have to vacuum degas it for a lot of applications. But uh, just remember, vacuum degassing is the only way to ensure a perfectly bubble-free part. But just to go over again what we've done here. So here's our basic color. And by adding other silicone pigments, like a little bit of brown or a little bit of red or yellow, we still wind up with a very homogeneous flesh tone. And what we do by adding the flocking colors is we break that up. And again, by breaking it up, we get that much more organic look. So there we have our flesh tone with a little bit of red flocking. And then here's some red and brown flocking. And again, the more you start layering these colors, provided they're all relative to the paint scheme or the flesh tone you're matching, the more realistic it becomes. And now we're adding red and brown and green flocking. And then we're going to add a little bit of yellow. And again, the more you practice with this, the more you'll start to have an eye for these colors and how they work together to get the finished shade that you want. Now I went ahead and put a blur on this final picture and that'll give you a little better idea of what that's all going to look like in a translucent skin material. But you see there with all the colors together and the more colors you have, the more that breaks up that flat look of just silicone pigment. So it didn't matter if we had five or six different silicone pigments together because those all wind up being one homogeneous color. It's those flocking colors that really elevate that and really make it look more like organic tissue. Now again, 5110F is a very low viscosity silicone. This has a mixed viscosity of around 2,500 centipoise. So most parts like this, we don't have to vacuum degas. But again, if you're doing really critical medical simulators and silicone dolls and masks, always a good idea to vacuum degas. And there's more than enough time to do that because that six to eight minute working time, we had plenty of time to get our color right with time to spare. So again, when you need to, always a good idea to vacuum degas. But you can already see from the top of that pour, you can see those flocking colors, how they break up that otherwise flat look of synthetic material. So again, the more flocking colors we put in, the more realistic our cured silicone skin is. Now, before we demold our parts, always a good idea. You might have seen this in previous videos. I always like to peel out whatever is in my mixing bucket first just to make sure everything is cured properly and is ready for demold. Because if I can peel out what's left over in that bucket, that's a good indicator that whatever is in the molds is ready to come out. And there we have our final silicone skin with flocking. 
And I'll show it again here outside in the sunlight so you can see how that refracts sunlight. That's, again, one of the amazing things about translucent platinum silicone is the way it refracts light is just like human skin. That's where we get very realistic effects from that. So the way light passes through that, provided you didn't overpigment it, is much like real organic tissue. Now, as I mentioned earlier, sunlight is the best judge of your coloration. So here's a little belly button piece out in the sunlight. And you can see if you look close, you can see those little bits of color in there that really help it look a lot more organic. Now, last but not least, I mentioned earlier uh, that uh, there's a different technique if you're working with larger batches. If you're just doing little parts like I did in this video, obviously you could just mix up that color as you're working and it's not that big of a deal. But if you're working with bigger projects where your color has to match throughout several batches, what I like to do is go ahead and measure out my A and B into mixing cups. You could even do this in five gallon pails if necessary. And you'll notice I've labeled my buckets A and B and even the stir sticks A and B. And once we've measured out our components in that, then what I do is I pigment the two components independent of each other. And this goes for both the silicone pigments as well as the flocking colors. So whatever you do to A, you do to B. And then you mix it all up and check and make sure they match. And that way you can use these two buckets to mix up multiple batches that all match. So again, if you're working on large projects like some of our customers that make bodies or really large medical simulators and those batches all need to match, it's a really good idea to keep a color formula handy and and do that to a five gallon kit. Mix up your part A and your part B. Mix up all your uh, skin tones in those individual components and that way everything done with that all matches. Now also important to remember that uh, flocking will settle over time. So if you do that make sure you mix up those components really good before you dispense that. But by doing that by mixing your pigment and flocking into those individual components that ensures that when you put that all together you don't have a color change so that way everything is consistent across multiple batches. So there you have the basic guidelines for realistic coloration of translucent silicones, be it medical simulators, silicone dolls, effect skins, and that sort of thing. But real important in closing, remember that our silicone pigments, our standard colors, as well as the new flesh tones, these are to be used with our flocking colors to make a, an infinite variety of colors by mixing these together. So remember, there's never going to be an off-the-shelf solution for every flesh tone out there. So you want to make sure you've got your artist hat on and you're ready to do color mixing appropriate to the job at hand. And this could mean combining existing silicone pigments to make your own custom flesh tone. So with that in mind, go forth and mix silicone. And remember that all of the materials in our videos are available in our web store. I'll put all of the links to everything we used in this tutorial in the video description. And of course, all of our products are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. So in addition to the product links, I'll also put a link to our video library. So be sure to check that out. And if you made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, click the little bell icon so you get notified when there's new content. And evidently, the algorithms like comments. So if you want to comment, ask a question or something, feel free to do so. And thanks for watching and supporting our channel.